What's up everybody, welcome back to another video slash tutorial slash devlog on the channel. Uh, in this video I'm going to show how I did add support for the project that I'm building for gamepad usage into the UI that I have so far, which is the inventory UI. Also how I did build that uh, preview to rotate uh, if the character wants to, uh, if the player wants to see uh, it rotating to see like different angles of the clothing that he's using or you know the whole thing. So basically the final result should be something similar to this. So right now I'm playing with the gamepad and as you can see, uh, so the whole HUD or interaction changes based on what I'm using, which in this case is the gamepad. If you want to see how I did that, there's a short video on how actually I did that uh, identification for either using gamepad or uh, keyboard and mouse. So there's going to be a link in the description below, also probably a card at the top of it. Uh, so basically the whole gigamoral and you know how to show either the gamepad button into the whole project is done pretty much the same way so I'm not gonna you know try to explain that again because you know there's already a video for it so basically I can pick it up and as you if you saw as well in the previous video if you pick it up on item it auto equipped so uh, that's also in the previous video there's also going to be a link in the description below uh, so let me pick up like a bunch of weapons, a bunch of potions. I can pick it up uh, a couple extra clothing as well. This one I haven't saw any, so I'm going to auto equip because I don't have one. Uh, yeah, so that's my character now. And if I press uh, the start button, which should be like the pause menu, as you can see now, I have interactions through the gamepad. I'm using the analog stick to navigate through the UI. And as you can see, it's the same thing as if I was using the mouse. So there is like this hover effect. Also, the, the whole HUD changes, uh, the interaction, like instructions changes based on the same approach for the gamepad. Um, and as you can see now at the top of it, into the buttons on the tabs, there's like this little uh, R button, which is basically the, the, R, the, la the right thumbstick. So if I press the right thumbstick, uh, to the left or to the right, I'm going to switch similar to what we do, uh, what we see on Breath of the Wild. So you can switch between tabs that way and you can also unequip or equip something different and something like that. So you can also drop items if you wanted to. So if I press B on that sense, I drop my item. I don't want that anymore. And yeah, that's pretty much. Also, if I press the rotate button, which is the, if I press the actual button, similar as well to the Breath of the Wild, if you press the uh, right thumbstick, you can see that now I have this little icon to rotate the character. And if I use the right thumbstick, I can actually rotate my preview. So yeah, that should be pretty much what I'm going to show here, I haven't set it up this whole RB and not LB at the top of it to go to the skill, the skill tree crafting and options, but that should be pretty much simple because it's going to be the same context as, you know, using the gamepad as pressing the R button or pressing the left thumbstick and etc. So let's get right into it. Uh, so if you follow along uh, this video, probably you should have, uh, you should have a briefly idea on how to implement this into your game. There's a couple of functions that I did in C++ that are specific to my project. So you're probably gonna not going to need to use that, but basically the whole concept uh, could be universal. Uh, so let me just... Also, if I go now with the keyboard, I forgot to mention, that's also implemented in the keyboard, so I can pick it up again. You can see that now I don't have those... Uh, the whole HUD changes, so I have my left mouse button to equip one and equip. So which is basically this. I have the right button to drop the item if I wanted to. There we go. If I rotate, I pretty much press the uh, middle mouse button. So as you can see now, I can rotate the character by pressing the middle mouse button and actually move around the mouse. Uh, and the button to go out, it should be ask in that sense, or escape. Uh, and then I can navigate as well through the, the whole thing. So yeah. That's pretty simple, but let's go uh, basically uh, into into the the simple one, uh, which is basically this rotation of the character, and then we go to the most complicated one, which is the whole gamepad interaction to the UI. So let's go uh, by 
piece by piece. So let me just put the gamepad aside here for a second. Uh, so as you can see now, uh, and as you saw in the previous video, there's also going to be a link at the top of the description below on how I actually put that uh, preview into how to add that character preview. But I had to modify this class a little bit. So basically before I had my face mesh and all my you know character preview uh, clothings here, and the spring arm was actually a child of my face mesh. But if I wanted to rotate the whole thing, and I don't want to rotate the camera, I want to just rotate the character around the camera, I couldn't actually leave the spring arm as a child of the face, because if I want to rotate the mesh, the whole camera would turn around with it, so it wouldn't do anything pretty much. So what I did, I went back into the C++ class, into the constructor of that class, and once I set the spring arm, the actual root component that I set a five is specified for is not more, it's not anymore the face mesh, it's now the root component, which is basically that scene down there. So it's the root component. So it's out. So now I can rotate my character free, freely. Oops, where there is go, there we go. I can rotate my character freely without actually needing to worry about moving the camera. And once I compile that, and that should be about it. So I change also the all a little bit, and I change like the the whole position of the camera. I change a little bit. I change also the arm length. And but yeah, that's not important for the sake of this video. I just change a couple properties, but the concept behind is the same as the previous videos on how to add uh, the character preview. So I just change also the size of the texture. Therefore, I went back to the render target and changed also the size of it. But anyways. Uh, so yeah, basically the main and key change was actually remove the spring arm from being child of the, the actual face mesh or the actual character mesh. So now I can rotate in the uh, Z, which is the yaw. So if I rotate that into the yaw value, that should rotate my character. So that's important to keep in mind. Uh, also, uh, I, would, I would like to have it like the regional rotation. So if I, you know, go back to the camera or, you know, I can... I want to, once I open the mesh again, uh, open the, no, not the mesh, once I open the, the HUD again, I want to make my character be facing front of me, like facing the original rotation. So I need to store that rotation somehow. So basically in the begin play of that, uh, I also, at the below, create like a original rotation value, and I save the component rotation basically. So that's pretty much how I did it. Uh, so that's the first thing. So now I can rotate my dummy actor or my preview character around the all uh, and that should give me that uh, should give me that preview rotation like rotation preview but how I did that how did actually rotate that uh, inside of the code so basically inside of the character itself and the inventory so on the inventory side what I did basically is I create a function let me just go back to the constructor a little bit look to the header file so I create a function called get rotation preview. Uh, and that's only re like returning this variable that I created, which is basically if it's rotating the character, because if it's rotating the character, I don't want to, you know, mess around with anything into my game. So if I'm rotating the character, I don't want to, you know, be able to click on buttons or anything of the sort. Uh, so I create that variable in that function, get rotation preview, which is basically returning that variable. So if I'm rotating the, char the character, I'm going to set that rotation preview to true. Or I'm gonna set the false space if my if I'm pressing the middle mouse button or if I'm pressing the right thumbstick, I'm gonna set the, that, that either to true or to false, uh, so I can rotate the character later. So that's the only thing that I actually did here into the inventory component, which is basically creating that property and create the getter in the setter for it. And inside of my character itself, inside of the input component, uh, if you go to the setup input, that's pretty much already set up for you. So if I go to input component. There we go. So set player input component. You should have already this turn and turn rate uh, pretty much set up for uh, on Unreal for you. And if you create that into blueprints, it should have I think something like this as well into blueprints. And that should go to and this y'all is basic basically to the mouse interaction. So if you're interacting with the mouse, it's gonna add the y'all directly. But if you're interacting with the gamepad, 
it should go to this turn at rate, which is also eventually called that at control that you know turn function, but using the values of the thumbstick itself. So I knew that I if I want to mess around with the yaw with my dummy character, I need to go to whatever my character is messing up with the yaw itself by default. So I went back into the gamepad first, and when I did that, basically it was this at yaw directly. So I First of all, I created this dummy reference, which is just uh, you know a reference for my dummy actor or my character preview. And on my begin play, I actually set this up. So on my begin play of my character, if I go back to the begin play, where is it? Where's the begin play? One sec, let me actually look for the begin play. There we go. And the begin play, I just get all actors of class of the dummy character. Remember, you should only have one into your hoe a uh, level, each level should have at least one based on the concept that I created uh, on that video. Uh, so basically I grabbed my, on the begin play, I grabbed that one preview character and set that as a reference inside of my character. And then to the turn rate, what I did is if I have a valid reference, I'm gonna do something. If I don't have it, I'm just, I'm not gonna even allow uh, inputs onto the actual gamepad or into the actual uh, you know, itself. I'm not going to allow camera rotation or something like that if I don't have a valid dummy reference. And that's intentional because if I see that something is not working while I'm testing, that means that I don't have a dummy character or a character preview into my level. So I should have one uh, because I'm adding this as a pre-requirement for the, the whole setup of a new level. Uh, and based on that, I'm actually grabbing as well if I'm paused, uh, if I'm, you know, paused, and basically that variable is set is set up once I create display the pause menu. So display pause menu. So whenever I press the button pause, which is the you know start button on the gamepad, what I'm doing basically is I'm either grabbing uh seeing if I have already a widget, a pause valid widget, and if I don't have it, I'm just gonna create one and add to the viewport. And also set, uh, set the B pause to true because I'm paused. I'm showing the pause menu. But if I already have a valid one, I don't need to create that again. I just need to either remove on priority if there's already in the viewport. So if I press the start button with the pause menu in front of me, it's going to remove it. And I'm going to set to false because I'm not paused anymore. And if I am, uh, I have a valid pause menu reference, but I'm not showing that to the screen because I possibly already remove it. I'm just going to show that back to the screen and set the pause to true. Also, this two function here is pretty important, which is basically setting up the focus uh, for the menu. So if I set the input mode to game only, basically it's not going to care uh, for the UI interactions that you do with either gamepad or mouse uh, in terms of focus. Um, so you should also take care of those if you wanted to. Also, if I, I'm showing the mouse to false, if I'm removing the whole thing, if I'm removing the menu from the screen, I'm not going to show the, the mouse cursor anymore. But if I'm presenting that menu to the screen, I'm going to check either if I'm using gamepad. And if I'm not using gamepad, then I'm going to show the mouse cursor because possibly I'm using a mouse and keyboard. Uh, so yeah, you should take care of this. Also, once I'm presenting that, and I'm also doing that back down here, uh, once I'm presenting the actual pause menu, I'm going to set the input mode to game and UI, and UI, and the controller reference is going to be pretty much my controller, which is basically the get, game play, uh, get player controller node into Blueprints, and the reference, which is basically the UI that I'm going to allow inputs into my gamepad or into my mouse, in terms of focus is the pausing menu reference, which is basically the same one that I just created down here. Okay, so that's how I set it up focus and set it up a pause, but let's go back again to turn at rate. So basically what it's doing then, if I have a dummy character or a player a character preview, and if I'm not paused, so if I'm not paused, then uh, I'm gonna allow you all inputs. I'm gonna just, uh, and this is pretty much default. So I'm, if I'm not paused, I'm just running the game, you know, as usual, I'm gonna allow the input, uh, the actual UI inputs like rotating camera and etc. 
And I'm also going to grab my dummy reference and set the world rotation that to its original value. So whenever I open that back up, uh, my player, my player preview is going to be facing and like it's going to facing me. However, if I am pause, if I'm not paused, uh, sorry. However, if I am paused, I'm going to check whether if inside of my inventory, I have this get rotation preview set to true. So which means that if I press either my thumbstick or my middle mouse button, uh, that means that I should allow the character to rotate. Therefore, if I'm not, uh, if I am paused and I am allowing the character to rotate the camera, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rotator, uh, rotator called actor rotation to apply, which is basically the rotation that I'm going to apply to, to that character preview. And that's going to pretty much be uh, a make rotator. And remember, I'm just changing the yaw. And the rate that I'm going to change is pretty much whatever I'm sending into the gamepad to rotate the camera. So whatever is in the analog stick. So it basically pretty much grab the rate, multiply by minus one because it's inverted uh, usually uh, when you use the gamepad stick. And this multiply by two is just the strength of it. So if I left that, if I remove that, it would work just fine, but it could be slowly as I'm moving around the gamepad stick. So uh, if you see that it's too slow in your end, just you know increase that uh, strength or threshold, whatever you want to call it. So I could put that to five, and then the rotation could be uh, could be a lot faster, or I can put that to minus I don't know, no, not minus. I could put that to uh, 0.5 seconds, and that could be slow, even slower while rotating the character. So it's a matter of whatever you want to put it. And also, after I create this rotator, uh, rotator I'm going to actually set this rotation to my face mesh, which is basically that root mesh of the character inside of my dummy actor. So I can grab my face mesh, set ro ro rotation, and I compose a, ro a new rotation based on the current rotation of the the actual character preview and i'm adding the actual rotation to apply which is basically whatever the rotation we have on the character preview plus uh, or multiply whatever the new yaw rotation that you just add over here and since that's going to be triggering anytime you're actually move around your thumbstick that's going to be updating like all the time so if you stop uh, using the thumbstick that should not trigger here, uh, not, that should not update here, but whenever you change that and start moving around the thumbstick again, that should work. So let me just remove that to show that it could be a bit slower, but it should still work. So let me just grab whatever my gamepad, there we go. All right, so finally compiled. So basically, as you can see now, if I pick it up and I press the R button, I can rotate, but it's a lot slower than it was before. So I put the, if I put that to five or something, it's gonna be a lot faster. So if I add that back in, but instead of that, I put, I don't know, 10, it might be too much, but it's gonna be a lot faster. There we go, it compiled finally. And if I press again the button, as you can see now, it's rotating a lot faster. So that's basically what that multiplier version down there is. So I left to two because it was optimal for me. So you can change to whatever you wanted down there into your project. So yeah, that's how I added these rotation to the character inside of the turn at rate for gamepads. However, uh, if I'm using the mouse button, I'm not gonna use using this function turn at rate because this usually is only for gamepads. And uh, for the mouse button, instead, there it's using directly this add all input, uh, add controller your all input, and which is also basically what the gamepad is calling, but is you know doing a couple a few maps here based on the you know the gamepad and etc. the thumbstick. So if you go back to the turn itself, which is basically the actual mouse button, what I did, I did pretty much the same thing. So it's if there is a dummy reference and if I'm not paused, then I'm going to do whatever I need to do, which is basically like change the camera, rotating the, the camera around the character. And I'm also setting the rotation back to the original value. However, if I am paused, so I'm going to store that same thing and I'm going to do the same rotation gigamaro here.
So this way, if I am with the mouse, if I press the middle button, it should rotate into the same strength. But since the mouse is pretty much more, like it's a lot sensi sensible, I would say. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but since it's a lot uh, more sensitive, that's actually the word. Since it's a lot more sensitive, you should probably, uh, you know, slow down sensitivity down there. So you shouldn't put, for example, 10 as I just put it, because you, sh you know, you, sh you would be giggling around like a lot faster. Also, since the mouse uh, doesn't kind of care for the losing focus and etc., the whole mouse and keyboard interaction doesn't care usually for losing focus. So I, I'm not even checking once I'm calling the audio control input if I am with that variable inside of my character component set to true uh, that I can rotate or not. So I'm not even caring to that. I'm more taking more extra steps just for the gamepad to check that variable because I'm using that same gamepad stick to change tabs between the inventory. So just so I can, you know, I wouldn't end up with a scenario where I am rotating the character and also changing the tabs between weapons, including or etc. at the same time, which would be a nightmare, believe me. So for the mouse, I don't care. I'll check in their variable just for the gamepad because I'm using the same thumbstick to do other things inside of the inventory. So that's why I have this extra check here for the gamepad section. And there you go. That's how you would do the whole turnaround in itself, like to rotate the character preview into your game. Okay, so if I go now to the pause menu, let's let's go back a little bit and work around now with the interactions on the gamepad. So if you see with the mouse, I can still move around. I have my character, my, you know, my cursor being presented, and that should be okay. But for the gamepad, I don't have cursors. I don't have anything. So I need to work around with something that we call focus instead of the UI, and that's something that could be really troublesome to set up if you're not set some, setting up correctly, because you can lose focus pretty easily when working with gamepad inside of the Unreal Engine. Uh, but the concept behind the gamepad is, if I'm using a gamepad, I should be working with focus. Uh, and if I'm using the mouse button, I shouldn't be caring with focus. Or, I mean, the engine does down uh, you know, into the background, but I kind of don't care because I have my visual feedback based on whatever I'm moving my mouse. Uh, but if you see there, if I open the inventory with my gamepad, my first button is auto select. So I can understand where I am, where I want to go. And if I go to the end, where should I go if I am into the last object? And it should auto identify that I should go to the first one and etc. cetera. Uh, also, if I press the upper button into the gamepad stick, into the left thumbstick, it should not go to the previous buttons, or if I press down, it should not go anywhere. It should not lose these focus if I am not allowing them to. However, if I change that to somewhere that has a second line, I should also allow them to change, but until only until there. It should not lose focus that way. Uh, so how do I do that? Uh, first of all, let me just go back to the actual slot class. And remember, the everything is into blueprints, but most of the things is into C++. So they are user widgets that are, cre that are created in C++. So if you want to take, take a look, like take a step back and see how I create all of those widgets, there's also going to be a link to the description below on how I create those widgets with C++ and then extend them to blueprints. So I can work around with them. Uh, also, it's going to be probably a card on top of it, if I remember how to put it. Uh, but uh, so I have my widget, and I added an extra. Uh, let me just go back to the constructor down there. So I added an extra item to it, which is the selection border. So it's a new border, and I just added there, outside of it, everything into this color. Uh, and also wrap everything inside of the canvas panel so it could, you know, extend that around my button. Uh, so this 
specific border is not being presented if I'm playing with the keyboard. As you can see, there's no extra border. Uh, so the buttons are pretty much uh, even, even out. But if I press with the gamepad, as you can see, there is like the first button, which is the one that, oops, my mouse is in front of it. So my, the first button that is, is, is slightly bigger, so it can at least pass the feedback to the user that even if that's active into the inventory, he can still understand that he's selecting that. So that's why I added that extra border, so you can have these uh, sort of feedback to him. So that's only being displayed into when you're interacting with the gamepad. So that's an extra tap that I did it. Um, and as you can see, when he's selecting, because of that border, the slots became slightly bigger because that's border is showing up. So that's why I added that border. Also, if you go back to the inventory, let me just go back to whatever I'm specifying that, and to the slot, sorry. If you go to the slot, not only I added that border, but I added a couple extra functions down there, which is basically to do the whole dropping with clicking with the right mouse button or clicking with the B button inside of the UI. It also drops the item. Uh, so I create those native on preview mouse button down and this is actually a function that is already inside of the user widget. I just override them. And basically, if I press a mouse button in, with my inventory, what I'm basically doing is I am checking if it's the right mouse button. So if it is, and I have an even, a valid item into it, and I'm not rotating the character. Remember, if I'm not rotating the character, then I can drop an item, my character preview. And I have an item into that slot and I'm pressing the right mouse button, what I'm doing is I am broadcasting a delegator to someone else that is actually care about it, which should probably be the inventory or the mouse button. I don't quite remember which one it is from the top of my head. Oops, what happened down here? Go back. Uh, so let me just go back. I think it was the pause menu. Yeah, it's the pause menu. So there we go. So I'm broadcasting this delegator on right click and the one that is and again i already explained how delegator works or binding things works into ui to c plus plus but basically what i did is i broadcast that delegator that i'm carrying only on the pause menu and whenever i'm broadcasting that it's going to call this function on drop item which is basically just well drop an item into the inventory which is going to you know remove from the inventory and spawn that spawn that same actor class item into the world and etc etc so yeah uh, that's only for mouse but if i want to do that for the gamepad as well because again that's only mouse interactions with the ui i want to call this other override this other function which is native on preview key down which is basically any key uh instead of it's with the exception with the exception of the mouse key uh, and what I did basically is I did the same thing, but the difference is I'm in check, I am checking right now for a gamepad face button right, which is the B button on, on an Xbox controller. Uh, so it's like the, I think it's the circle button on the PS5 controller. And I forgot what is the, the actual button on the Switch, but you know, that's the gamepad uh, right face buttons. Uh, and I'm doing the same thing. And if that works, I'm just broadcasting the same message. So it should work as it is, as it, it's working right now for the, I mean, I mean, the drop logic doesn't change. It only changes that I am checking for that button right now. So that's how I did the drop. But how it actually knows which button is focused or it isn't focused. So whenever I open up or create the widget, Remember that I set, I've set it up on my character on the display pause menu. I've set it up so it could set the input mode to game and UI. And I added the focus to my pause menu UI by doing so. So by doing that, I am allowing gamepad or anything interactions with my UI as well. Uh, but which UI? The pause menu. That's basically what I did. So whenever I'm creating, I'm already allowing interactions to it. 
but how do I make the focus onto the buttons itself? So basically, and that's something that it was pretty tricky for me to figure it out because uh, there is some sort of bug in C++ or something that, you know, if I don't add like a delay of 0 0.1 second, it doesn't focus, but I'll get to it. So I created like a function and that's simpler to do in Blueprint. So I create a function as well somewhere here called, let me just check it, where is it? Uh, it was actually in the inventory, sorry. Let me just go back to the inventory. I create a function, a fo a function inside of the inventory, which is a Blueprint implementable event called star focus. And what I did with that is, uh, whenever I'm creating the inventory UI, the inventory UI is going to grab all my inventory slots. And it's going to, so my inventory UI is going to have inventory slots classes inside of it. And my pause menu is going to have my inventory UI inside of it. So it's like hierarchy down there. So basically what I did is whenever I am getting the inventory items. So this is a function that on construct, as you can see, I'm getting the, I'm building the inventory items with that. So whenever I'm building the inventory items, I call this based on the inventory, I call this function passing a different inventory. So I call this function build slots. And once I finish building the slots, yeah, there we go. So once I finish building the slots, I go back to that function down there, up there. So whenever I'm finishing building the items, then I call this function and start focus. And the implementation of what's going to do it, I do it in Blueprints. And it's a simple implementation. It's a real simple implementation. So what I do in Blueprints is for that class is, let me go back to the inventory. If I go to the graph, I have this star focus event now, because remember, it's a Blueprint implementable event. And what I do basically is I grab my player controller and actually don't need to be player controller. I can actually get only player. That should work just fine. I don't need that node. So uh, I am grabbing the only player controller. So which is the player that is zoning that UI? I cast my C++ class and I check whether I'm using the inventory or not, uh, whether I'm using the gamepad or not. And if I am using the gamepad, and remember, I don't want to mess around with focus. I don't need to mess around with focus and this whole gigamaro if I'm using the, the mouse and keyboard because the whole very effects and everything works out of the box with mouse and keyboard. But gamepad, I need to be extra, take this extra step. So if I'm using a gamepad, what I'm doing, I'm just adding a delay of 0 0.1 second and I am setting the keyboard focus to whatever is the first slot inside of my slot grid. So whatever is my first slot inside of the slot grid, which is going to be one of those uh, inventory slot classes once that they're building. So I am setting that to be focus. So therefore, what I'm doing with that is I am saying, OK, Gamepad, you're going to start from here. Start here. OK, so that's why it always, when I'm playing with the Gamepad, it always starts with the first button uh, selected. And if I go to the next one, it's going to build that again, it slots again, and it's going to change for the first one again. And if I change again, it's going to go to the first one again. So I know where to start the focus on the gamepad. So that's how I did it. And I don't know why this is, I mean, there is this, func this function set keyboard focus, but if I don't add the 0 0.1 delay, it somehow, it doesn't work. It doesn't focus. So it was a pretty painful thing to do, but I, I don't, I don't know if it's a, that's a new bug or something, but anyways. Uh, so that's how I did it. So I know that I should start focusing on the first button, but how do I, vi I mean, if you don't set up visuals, you're just gonna see probably like a, a, a line, like a square line in, so inside of your object, and that it's not gonna be good as well. Uh, however, you should, if you're seeing like a, a an error, like a message error, it's because your widget is not set to be focusable. Uh, so basically, if you go to the constructor of that widget again, on the initialize, there's a function called, uh, there's a variable called be is focusable. On the blueprint as well, if you open up the slot and go to the class defaults, where is it that is focusable? I remember I've seen something. Oh, there we go. 
So there we go. So there's this interaction is flexible. If that's not set to true, basically nothing that you do like this set keyboard focus would not work. So you should have your widgets to be flexible. So otherwise you won't be able to focus that with the gamepad. Uh, so that's one. I set that to true by default. And once I have this set to focus inside of the inventory, whenever I order them to start focusing in, then I go to back to my inventory slot when the, the magic actually happens. So I have this Gigamoro here. So whenever the focus is added to my slot, uh, inventory slot, what do I do? And whenever I remove the focus from the inventory slot, what do I do? Which is basically where all the magic happens when C++ is working with gamepads uh, and you know UI interaction itself. I also created a separate function uh, let me just check it. Uh, that's also in the inventory, if I'm not mistaken. Call set inventory button row, but I'll I'll get back I'll get back to it in, in a second. So once I set the focus, uh, once I set the focus to my first element, what do I do from now? From now on, like how do I visual do I visualize that first button to be selected into the gamepad? So I go back to my inventory slot. So whenever I added a focus, so once I set the keyboard focus, it's going to trigger that event here, native on added focus path. What I'm doing is I am checking that I am not showing the mouse cursor, which means that I'm using the gamepad. So I don't care again about focusing and then I'll do the whole gig uh with keyboard. So if I'm not using the keyboard and mouse, which means that I'm using the gamepad and I am not also rotating the character, because remember, once I'm rotating the character, I don't want to interact with the UI. Uh, what I do basically is I call this function called set active style and onslaught hover, which is basically already, you know, basically what it does with the onslaught hover. Uh, like it looks like if you're working with the mouse, that's the onslaught hover. Once I pass the mouse over, it shows this simple description. So. I call that same function to also show the simple description if there is any, if there is any. And I call this function set, uh, set active style. And I also make the selection border, which is that border that I just presented y'all to be visible because I'm using a gamepad. So that should be visible to provide feedback for me. And I set, and the set active style is nothing else but setting button style. So if you go to the button, there's like this style button here. Like what, what do you do with the normal, uh, with the hover, with the press and etc. So what I did is I set a, a, that style, like the, all of those colors to be image, no tile, like what's the normal, what's the hover, what's the press. And then I create this button style and I set this normal to be normal, which is basically that gray color, uh, hover to be that, uh, orange color pressed to be that darker orange color. But if I am set, sending that is active, which is pretty much what I'm sending uh, once my item is active, basically what it's doing is if my item is already active, oops, I actually didn't press with the gamepad, sorry. Uh, so if my item is already active, I don't want that to be deactivated. So I want to keep it that style to present the user that this item is activated, but if it isn't, then it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be like regular ones. So if that is that item is active, what is basically doing then instead of setting the normal color to be normal, like that gray area down there, I'm setting that to be the hover one. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the style. And if there isn't like any item or if there is an item, but that item is not active, I'm setting the normal color the hover and the press like as, as usual, uh, like this, but if the, there is an item there and that item is actually active, what I'm doing then is I'm setting that normal color to be the actual hover color. So, uh, it's in, in terms of visibility, uh, it's a pretty terrible experience because you would not see any interaction with the UI. That's why I am, I created that border down there. So I can still have some sort of feedback because if you have like this, 
and you press it and you press again, you see that I still want to keep that active, but I want to provide some sort of slightly feedback to the player that he's, you know, over that uh, slot. So that's why I create that border. Because without it, you wouldn't see anything. Like, it would look like, like, like this. So if I press, like, oops, oops, let me just play it again. It will look like this. So... As you can see, there's no border when I use the mouse. So it would look like this using the gamepad as well, which is not a pretty good feedback. I mean, for the mouse, I was okay with it, but for the gamepad, it's just terrible. So that's why I use that, uh, sending that if the item is active, basically, if that item is active of that slot. So if it is, well, send that to true. And if it is true, then it's just going to uh, leave it active, but still pre preserve that border as a feedback. Okay, so that's if I'm adding focus, which means that, which is pretty much what is doing this. So it's adding the focus to that button, and that button what it's doing is, okay, if I am using the gamepad, I'm gonna set the, act, the button to be active, which is changing that color to orange. And then if it is active, I'm not changing that to, a, like the original orange or either it would be deactivating the item uh, intentionally, which is not what I wanted. So if it's already active, I, do, I don't change anything into the style, uh, but I do, uh, I do set my border to be visible so the user can see that border running around. And how does it know uh, when to remove the, the focus? Well, Unreal does something like this automatically. Once you set the focus, uh, the whole thing is uh, basically set set it up like I mean it's basically set up already. So if you go to the inventory, you can see that for all elements that you have, you're gonna have a section down there called navigation, uh, and that navigation is pretty much how you would work out with that widget with a gamepad basically, or with a different sort of input. So if I'm using like a different uh, input method, like maybe not a gamepad, maybe it's an Oculus Rift input or something like that, the whole navigation would be handled here. But it, that would only work if that widget specifically would be like would be in focus. So initially what I did is I set it up the first one to be focused. But how does he know that if I press uh, left, it should go to that widget. If I press right, it should go to that widget. That's how actually it works. It works down based on if I press left, uh, whatever left is on, onto the input command, it's going to either escape, which is go to the next one, stop, which is not allowing to go, like continue navigating, wrap, I, I don't know what I actually wrap with, custom, explicit, explicit etc. Uh, so basically what I did then is, so whenever you're pressing left, right, up, down, or whatever on the gamepad, those are being called. And, but that's pretty easy to lose focus on. Uh, also, if you've seen like a, a weird uh, square, like like a weird square around the, the buttons, you could go always back to the edit project settings, and you see that on your session. Oh, not where is it? Project settings actually calls it. So you can also go to edit project settings, user interface, and uh, render focus row. I think it would be like navigation only, which is basically providing like some sort of feedback to you, but it's a pretty ugly one. I just set that to never, and that uh, square, uh, weird square for you is gonna be, you know, out. It's not gonna be presenting any, presented anymore. So if you leave that as on, probably your feedback would be something like this. Let me just go back to the user interface. Navigation only. I'm not sure if it's gonna be visible on video, but uh, if you see that there is this weird, uh, square around it with those dash lines. Uh, that's the default behavior for Mario to provide you feedback that an item is in focus or not. So to remove that is just go into the project in the settings, user interface, and set that to never. And that should fix the issue as well. So that should remove that line for you. Okay, so uh, once you set it up, these focus, let me just go back to the inventory. Once you set it up, the focus, 
You need to set it up the ruse for left, what is left, what is right, what is up, what's down, what's gonna do. Um, initially, it's gonna work, but let's suppose it's it's probably gonna work out of the box for you uh, for most of the things that you're gonna do it. But if you go to the UI, let's suppose you go to the last one. If you tap right once again, probably what it's gonna would do on your example, you would lose the focus. Uh, and well, the feedback would be horrible. And if you keep pressing, keep pressing, you could pro possibly gonna be lost and need to, you know, close the widget and reopen it. So you need to set up those rules. Uh, and how you do it is uh, once you, you know, press left, right, left, right, it's automatically gonna call this native on remove focus from path. And what I'm doing basically is if I'm using the gamepad, basically. If I'm not using the uh, the mouse cursor, uh, the mouse, and I am not rotating the character again, and I have, my item is not active, because if the it's my acting is active, I'm not gonna set the default style, which is basically that gray background. But if it isn't, uh, if it is active, then I'm gonna set the active style instead, and I'm also gonna hide my selection border for that specific uh, slot. And I'm call, gonna call the unhovered so it, it doesn't present that. Uh, it doesn't present this. So whenever I unhover, it, it hides this inf like quick information pop up. So that's how I, I am setting up to you know uh, navigate around it. But to net to set up the rules that I just mentioned, you should go to the main one like the main widget, which is in that in that case is the inventory. So if you go to the inventory, I create this function called set inventory button row. And I, you know, because in the inventory is the one is where I'm building those lots. If you already have that into your UI, like all of them at once, since I'm building them dynamically, I need to do that. But if you have, for example, inside of the inventory widget, some sort of a binding to have all of them already, you know, place it, you could just work through the blueprint editor and do that. But since I'm not, I'm not doing that, I'm doing that dynamically into the C++ code. Uh, I create this function is I pass an inventory button, an inventory slot button. I pass its index. What is its position and what, like, what is the is row inside of the grid? What is its column inside of the grid? And I then create a couple rows, which is basically setting up those uh, rules down there, like this navigation rules up here. So if I am at the grid column zero, which means is I am the first button inside of the inventory, I am setting the navigation rule for the left. If I tap left on my gamepad, I'm not gonna allow anything, I'm gonna stop. So if I play that again, what that is basically doing is if I am at the first lot, grid row zero, like not, not first lot, but if I go to the uh, clothing, which has two lines, if I'm the Grid column zero, sorry, not, it's grid row or grid column? I if grid column, okay. If I am on the grid column zero, which means that I'm the first column, if I press left, nothing happens. As you can see, nothing happens. It doesn't go anywhere. I am stopping this sort of interaction. If I allow that inside of my code, I'm just counting that out, the whole code out. I'm just coming out all the stops so you can see the nightmare it is. And compile that back again. There we go. So that's the issue. So I comment out all of my rules out there with the exception of the last one going back to the first one. But as you can see now, if I am pressing the up, down, left, I lose the focus on the gamepad. And with the time, that becomes unmanageable. So, which is a pretty terrible feedback. So basically what I did here is I set it up all my logic. So, I'm just uncomment that back. So if I am on the column zero, which is basically the first column, uh, of my inventory, I do not allow left inputs. So if I press left, nothing happens. 
if I am on the column uh, on the row zero, which is the first row, I should not allow up navigations, which means that I should not allow in focus into losing focus to the other elements of the UI. In that in that sense, that would be the sword down up there, the shield, uh, the clothing, and the potion icon. So those are the elements that I'm losing focus right now once I press up. Uh, so I do not allow also up navigations if I'm the first lot. If I am the, on the other row, like maybe a second or third row, I should allow up navigations. Otherwise, I would not be able to uh, to go back. So let, let me just actually do this real quick. So this is quite annoying. but uh, So if I block all up navigations instead, what that would do is if I go to the clothing, which has more than one line, and so in terms of lots, if I go to the line below it, I wouldn't be able to go back up because I just blocked those interactions. So let me just open the inventory. Uh, oops, open the inventory. There we go. If I go, now you can see that I do not allow, I do not lose focus going up. But if I go down and I press up again, I cannot go up because I just block all up navigations, up like up focus navigations inside of my UI for all lines, which is not what I wanted. I just wanted to do that for the first line. So that's why I did that. So if I unblock that, that should work just fine. And as well, if my grid row is bigger than zero, which means I am not the, I, I mean, I do have more than one row inside of my inventory. And only if I have one, more than one row, then I'm gonna check it if I can or not allow navigations down. So in that sense, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the amount of slots that I have it, dividing them by five because each line has five slots. And if that if that matches, like if that's equal to zero, I'm gonna stop it. I'm not gonna allow down navigations. So if I have more than one row into my grid and my amount of slots actually match, so I'm double checking that, and my amount of slots actually matching to be bigger than zero, then I'm not gonna do anything. But if there are like there's only one line, like the zero line, then I'm gonna not allow down navigations, which is basically what avoids me of losing focus. Oh okay, yeah, I need to move around. So what avoids me losing focus if I press down here, it doesn't lose focus. But if I go to the clothing uh, tab which has more than one line, if I press down it allows me because my grid row is not zero, like it's, it doesn't have only one line, so it allow it doesn't stop me. It, it allows me to go down. And there we go. Uh, also, this navigation down here, which is, if I move around again and go back, if I go to the last uh, slot and I press right again, I go back to the first one, but how that actually works. That's working because if my grid row is zero and only if it's zero, uh, no, if my grid row, my grid column is four, which is basically zero, one, two, three, four, which means that I'm into my last slot of the row into that, co uh, into that column. Uh, what I'm doing is I am setting specifically to go back to the first one. So what I'm doing is I'm setting a navigation rule explicit to if I press right again, uh, the widget that's going to focus is going to be whatever is index minus four, which is going to be the first one. So it's going to be the zero one, which is zero, one, two, three, four in an array, which would be the first one. So that's how I sp I'm specifying that here to go back to the first one. And that would work for as many slots as you would ha like to have it. So if I go to the game play, uh, inventory component and added, I don't know, weapon items to be 15 items. So that would be, I think, three rows or something. So there we go, three rows. Navigating down, that works. Navigating left, that works. If I go back, oops, go to the first one, go to the first one, go to the first one. And I do not allow to go up if I'm the first line. I do not allow to go down if I'm the last line. I do not allow to go left if I am on the first element of the row. I could do like a workaround to go to the 
uh, last column down there, but still work in progress. Uh, but that's how you would set it up. And I am only allowing focus on the on the items on the inventory. And the press button should be pretty much the same. So if you press on uh, the click button on the on the gamepad interaction is always the uh, button down on the gamepad, like face button down. Which is on an Xbox controller is the button A. On a PS4 controller, I don't know, I think it's X. Uh, but yeah. So you should be you should be doing whatever you do you specify on click because whenever you press A uh, on the gamepad, what it's gonna do is call the on click event onto the button itself. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's how to set it up this basic navigation to the game plan, the, the gamepad. But again, on the inventory slot, I do not allow navigations if I am rotating the character. Okay. So how do I specify the character to be rotating? Rotating, and I do that on the pause menu because the pause menu is having my inventory. So if I go back to the pause menu, I have my function call. Again. On native, on preview mouse button now, native preview key down. So what I'm doing is whenever I'm pressing the mouse, I actually tested this, but I, uh, if I wanted to only allow, if I press the middle mouse button, I could just do the same gigamaro rule here. I just remove it because I figured it was like easy to do without it. But on the gamepad itself, I check if I'm pressing the right thumbstick, which is basically this. Uh, button that I specify into my uh, legend down here. And if I press it, the right thumbstick button, what I'm doing is I am setting the rotation preview to inverted whatever value is by default. So in that sense, it's false. But if I setting a not false, it's going to be true. And next time that I press it, it's going to be false because I'm setting a not true. And that's false. So I'm just inverting the value, like switching the value. Whenever I press the gamepad stick, the the gamepad right thumb stick. Uh, so that's the only thing that I'm doing in the pause menu. Uh, so I am setting that variable. So therefore, I would not be able to navigate around anymore into my slots or into my inventory because I do that same check around the inventory as well. There you go. I'm gonna explain that real quick uh, in a few minutes, but. Whenever I'm changing as well the tabs with the left thumbstick, I'm not allowing that anymore. Okay, and inside of my pause menu, if I go back to the, my pause and blueprint, I have this icon here called Preview Rotation Instructions, which is just like this little R icon. And the visibility of it, I tied that to a preview rotation like a, a bind that to a function. And what that's pretty much doing is, is grabbing both my player paw and my player controller. And if I'm using the gamepad, because that's a gamepad instruction, so I'm only gonna present that for a gamepad. And if my rotation preview is set to true, then I'm gonna set that to visible. Otherwise it's gonna be hidden. So that's what brings this feedback. If I press the thumbstick, as you can see now, I have instructions to move around. And if I press again, uh, the thumbstick is going to be false. So it's going to disappear and I can navigate again into the UI, which gives me the similar feedback that I have for Breath of the Wild and stuff. Okay, so that's how I did this whole interaction to not you know, allow navigation or interaction because if I'm rotating and I'm trying to move the left thumbstick, nothing happens because I am not allowing them to navigate through the UI while, while rotating. Uh, but how do I navigate between the tabs? That's inside of the inventory. So I also have the same function again, native on preview key down. What I'm doing is I am checking. If I'm pressing the right thumbstick right button, which is basically moving the, thumb, the right thumbstick to the right, and I'm not rotating, then I'm just you know changing the click. The, the click. So if I am... Here, for example, if I am on the sword tab, which is off weapons, what I'm doing is I'm clicking on shield. 
So it should go here. But if I am on the shield one and press right, I should go to the clothing, which is basically this. And if I am into the potion, uh, the clothing one, I should go to the potions, which is basically this. And if I am into the potions one, I should go back to the, the, to the offensive weapons, which is this one. Okay? But if I do the opposite, which is basically instead of right, I do left, and I'm also not rotating, I'm doing the opposite. So if I am on the offensive weapon section, I go back to the potions. There we go. And if I am into the defensive weapons, I go back to the offensive weapons. And so far and so on. So that's how I handle this navigation using the gamepad itself. So I like Breath of the Wild does. I probably gonna need just to create like a better uh, UI uh, animation or something like that. But basically, as you can see, if I press the thumbstick to the right thumbstick to the to right, it goes to the shield section. Right again, go to the clothing. Right again, go to the potion one. And if I press right again, go back to the to the weapon. One. And if I press left, goes to the potion, clothing, gears, and weapons. But if I press the thumbstick button itself, it should not allow me to navigate because that's the rotation for the character. So it's rotating now. And if I press again, I should set that rotation to false and I can navigate back again. And that's how all the interaction into the UI level for a gamepad was built on. So let's summarize real quick uh, in two short words. Probably I'm going to forget a few things, but you can go back to the video anyway. So I'm just trying to summarize. So uh, once building the inventory, I create this function called set slot. Where is it? Start focus, which whenever I'm building the inventory or whenever I'm building the widgets, I am calling this function, start focus. And the function basically is doing setting the keyboard focus to the first element that I want to present for the player, uh, the first element that I want to focus uh, for the gamepad to have a start point. Okay, and I'm only doing that for the gamepad. Okay, that's the first one. But that will not work if the widget that I'm setting at is not focusable. And how do I set how do I set that? You can either go to the blueprint itself and set that manually here to is focusable to your base slot, or into the C code, you can just into the initialize set that to is focusable to be true. Okay? Step one, done. Now I need to set uh, the style or the visual feedbacks for my slot, which is basically the one that I'm setting to focus. And I do that by those two functions here, which is on added focus path, on remove a focus path. So whenever I'm on focus, I'm gonna change this style to be active, which means that orange one. And whenever I'm not focused, I'm set the style to be the default one, unless my, act, my, my item is already active, which is basically like a, uh, an equip item. So that one, I just leave it active as well. And I'm presenting or hiding the border, the feedback uh, border as, as needed. So once added, I present the border. <clears throat> once removed, I remove the border. Okay. And to remove that weird dash line, you can just go back to project settings, user interface, render focus root to never. Okay. Now the basic stuff is already set up. You could possibly work around the whole thing. But you're going to need to uh, specify rules for your inventory or navigation itself. So there's where I create this inventory rule. So whenever I create a slot, I call this function. And this function pretty much is setting up the navigation for me, the navigation rule. So if I am the first column, uh, do not allow navigation to left. So it doesn't do anything if the user press left. If I am on the last column, go back to the first column. If I am on the first row, do not allow navigation. If the if I only have one row, do not allow navigation to, to, to up. Oh, sorry, if I am on the first row, do not allow navigation to up because those are the buttons for uh, the sword, the shield, and etc. So I can navigate that. My intention is navigating them 
through the thumbstick, not through the gamepad focus. And if I have only a single row, do not allow navigation to down. Okay, set it up. That would fix like losing focus and etc. And to set it up, basically the rotation, not the rotation, sorry, the buttons being pressed down, press up, and do something else with it. Just use those, override those functions on preview key down or on preview key up or something. And you could just always get back whatever key you're pressing with, and then you could do whatever you wanted with it. In that sense, I'm grabbing the thumbstick so I can navigate through the UI. And in my pause menu, I am grabbing whatever I am pressing the thumbstick button itself so I can block navigation uh, with it and actually only uh, allow rotation of the character. And if you want to check if you press a specific button on the mouse, then you should, instead of using on preview key now, you should use on preview mouse button now. But the whole thing is change the style as you go through it, as you navigate through it with those edit on or remove focus path. And keep in mind that I did this into blueprints because if you don't add this delay, uh, probably it's not going to focus anything. It's just, it's just not going to work. I don't know why, but if you don't add this delay, this delay is just not going to work. All right. So that's all that I had to share. Uh, and the dummy preview, I, I I don't think I need to go back through it. It's pretty much like removing the spring arm and just rotating the dummy, whatever I needed, into the all, bit, uh, the all rotation into my character itself. Whenever the rotation is active, so let me just go back to the third at right. So whenever the rotation is active, I just rotate into the all pitch my preview character like my dummy reference character and whenever i'm not rotating which means that i'm not with that i'm not paused i'm just setting that back to the original value so whenever i open the widget it's always facing towards me and that should be about it hope you like it